Help the Hungry in the Horn of Africa by teaming up with How Can I Help and World Food Program USA to provide donations to the 10 million people desperately in need of food, clean water, and basic sanitation. The United Nations stated this to be the worst humanitarian disaster in history. Make a difference. Donate today. For more information and a secure link to the World Food Program USA donation pledge, please log on to www.howcanihelpsandiego.com. And thank you, San Diego. Up next on ITV, how can I help with your host, Ronnie Doss? Hi, my name is Ronnie Doss, and I recently graduated from UCSD. My parents were proud, I felt accomplished, but now like so many others in my situation, I'm trying to understand what to do next. I'm interested in the environment and green policy, but it's hard to determine what's actually useful and what's just a marketing scheme. So I went out to learn from the ground up what local San Diego businesses, industries, farms, government, and nonprofit groups are doing to make a difference by implementing, educating, creating, or currently using green and sustainable practices. So sit back, relax, and welcome to How Can I Help? It's another beautiful day in sunny San Diego, and I'm here with operations manager Terry Zorn, and uh, we're just trying to figure out a good way to really enjoy the summer sun and enjoy the outdoors while still respecting the environment. So, could you tell us a little bit about what is San Diego Seal Tours? Uh, San Diego Seal Tours is the only amphibious tour in San Diego. We take a, a big Ford 650 extended cab truck and drive it into the water. It's called a Hydroterra, and we do fuel it on biodiesel. Oh, cool. Yep, we, we fuel it on biodiesel. We also uh, include in our tour a lot of information about San Diego Bay, not only the history, what we see out there, the, the sea lions, the, the Navy activity, all that. We also include a little bit of education about stormwater pollution and what it took to really bring our bay back to life again and, and what kind of life is sustained by that bay and, and what people can do to improve their home as well because everybody has a common water outlet. Somewhere they have a common water outlet. Yeah, absolutely. And do you find um, when you do tell people and you kind of point these ideas out that people are more willing to accept them or understand? A absolutely. You know, I was shocked by the amount of people that did not know that the stormwater is completely separate from the sewer. Everybody thinks that when it goes into the gutter it's going to get filtered through the sewer, so who cares? They had no idea that that wasn't true. Uh, there's a lot of people that don't know that's okay, not true. Okay, you see like an eye-opening moment. Right, absolutely, that. absolutely. And uh, the other one is with the um, the Eastern Pacific Garbage Patch, and, and I tell people to go home and Google it, and there we have one satellite photo of it, but people are, are astonished by that because it doesn't get a lot of press. Oh. People don't know it's there. Alright, and then what is a uh what is an age for somebody who's on San Diego SEAL tours? We get, I've had an eight day old baby on my tour. We oh. have children all the way up to uh, seniors on board. It's just, it's a lot of fun because you never know what you're going to see out there. So it's just been a lot of fun. People just love looking at the sea lines. We get okay. really close and you don't get to do that at some of the larger big box attractions. We're uh -huh. just this little thing plowing through the water and we get you really close. Oh, awesome. Without without interfering with them as well. Okay, yeah, while well respecting them. While well respecting them. Oh, it is a family fun. You gotta have eight year olds all the way to 80 year olds, like you're saying. Yes. Well, what do you do for uh, the kids to keep them involved? Well, for the kids, before they get on board, they get a coloring book that we just uh, started. It was took years to get it get it out there, but it is it is uh, it's about Sandy, the San Diego sea lion, oh, cool. and it's a coloring book, an activity book, and it's also an educational piece about stormwater pollution. You don't want to engage just with the kids or just with the adults. You got to be able to do both, and and our guides are really good at that. Nice. And then why is it? Um, why do you feel? Ecotourism is a good part of this attraction, adding that element of the environment. Well, 
for, for one thing, because we run on biodiesel, and also because we are an informational tool, uh, tour, and in that way we can also be educational without sounding like we're on a soapbox, you know, and make it all part of the fun of it. And I, I really love the coloring book for the kids. I, I, I am so excited about that. It's a free thing that we offer with a kid's ticket, and uh, that's something they can take home and share. But um, also San Diego Steel Tours is involved in the, the Big Bay cleanup every year uh, and other cleanup events like that. So we, we respect the environment out there and, and all the other the boaters and, and pleasure craft people. And uh, I don't know, I just I, I think it's just a, a fun, smaller, unique way to get out in the bay and look at things. It's awesome. And uh, when you have these people coming through and checking out San Diego Steel Tours, uh, what is like a snapshot or an idea or something you'd want them to leave with? It's the, it's the most unique way to see all of San Diego because you get some of the road and some of the bay. It's, it's, it's the best perspective of a harbor city by doing both the road and the bay. In conjunction with that, we also have that uh, have our trolley tour, uh, which is fully on land, and that's more of an all-day hop-on-off tour. But oh, this okay. is a very this is a unique experience where you get both. Nice. Okay. More water than land, but you do get both. Oh yeah, absolutely. And I mean, I'm sure like the tourists that are coming to this destination want to see both. Aspects. Absolutely, yeah, they do. Okay. Yes, they do. And then, is this good? Uh for somebody like me who's already a San Diego resident, is it really oh, a fun thing for absolutely. To bring their what a friends? what a good question. What a good question because yeah. we have a program called the Hometown Pass. Oh, okay. And you can log on to www.hometownpass.com. Any any San Diego resident, can San Diego County resident can get a Hometown Pass and basically the resident rides free with a full priced adult ticket. Oh, so wow. it's a bit, it's a two for one. It never expires. There are no blackout dates. You can use it every time you come. A child can have a hometown pass, but they have to be accompanied by a, 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 an adult pit buying a ticket. Oh, okay. So we want residents to come and we want them to come without having to, to we want them to be a tourist without having to pay to be a tourist. Does that okay. make sense? Yeah. So if you're looking for some good family fun under the San Diego sun, don't hesitate to come celebrate at this eco-tourist attraction, San Diego Seal Tours. Thank you so much for your time, Thank Terry. You. It was really Thank fun. Thank you for joining us. <laughs>
stuff that you teach uh, with this education and outreach on like how to keep the beaches clean, how to keep it safe, or yeah. things that help out the community? Definitely. Um, as we paddle, the first thing I tell people on my tour as we paddle is to take a look for trash. Um, since we, uh, we want to keep this area as pristine as it is, as we paddle, you see balloons, plastic bags, um, all kinds of plastics floating around. We pick them up, kind of collect them all together. Um, we also help organize beach cleanups. We do a lot of stuff with the San Diego Coast Keeper and um, the Surf Rider Foundation and a lot of uh, nonprofits that promote ocean awareness here in San Diego. Awesome. Why do you feel um, ecotourism is important? Yeah. All right, I feel that uh, I feel it's important because uh, right out here, um, I was just telling you guys about kelp deforestation. Um, it's important to inform people and let them know about how our environment is being affected um, by just taking one little one little thing out of the food chain. So I was talking about how the abalone population is pretty much gone, which has driven the, the sea otter up to up to Monterey, which has led to the overpopulation of the purple sea urchin. And they're just, uh, they eat the little strands of the holdfast, which is how the kelp attaches itself to the seafloor, and it ends up kind of washed up on the beach. You guys can just see, take a look and see all this uh, all this kelp washed up right here. And uh, it's really important to inform people because if you don't, nothing nothing's ever gonna change. Absolutely, and do you yeah. notice that uh, people have like, been taking to this advice like all of a sudden they're like oh and you start seeing people grabbing the trash and actually like understanding how the ecosystem works once they get to see it definitely definitely um i've had a lot of people in the last you know it's fourth of july weekend super busy weekend i've had a lot of people asking me why all this uh, all this dead kelp is on the beach and i tell them and then they're and then a the light bulb all of a sudden turns on and they're like wow all right i can actually do something to help um you know help uh, keep keep the ecosystem intact People oh. have definitely been starting to show an interest once they realize how important it is. Nice. Yeah. So, um, who are ecotourists then? Yeah. I mean, you're an ecotourist. <laughs> <laughs> you're an ecotourist. You know, anybody can come out here and, and uh, share the love of the ocean with us. Okay. Um, pretty much anybody. Yeah, anybody that wants to show an interest in, uh, in uh, informing themselves. Nice. So yeah. what is the age range? Like uh, pretty much anybody? Or yeah. Like um, I've taken out, you know, six, seven year olds all okay. the way up to 65 year olds. So okay. anyone can come on out and, and share it with us. That's awesome. Yeah. So, uh, you know, besides, uh, you kind of alluded to this before, but besides having a great kayaking experience, what do you hope that uh, people get when they get yeah. through this entire experience? Um, I hope that by the end of my tours, um, people really understand how important it is in, uh, in preserving, preserving our natural resources, which is what we like to promote. You know, I tell, tell everybody about how the brown pelican was on the endangered species list and okay. how it was successfully taken off because the pesticide DDT was banned. Oh, so just, right. uh, just, you know, things like that, educating people, making them aware is what's, uh, what's going to save this little area right here. Okay. So, I hope people take that take that away from it. That's awesome. Yeah. So, um, you know, if uh, people are interested and they want to go, when's a good time to go? Um, all summer. Yeah, <laughs> all summer. Pretty much until September. Um, we've had some beautiful weather lately. Okay. Couldn't ask for anything yeah. more. We also do whale watching stuff in the in the oh. winter time. Yeah, we just so, did some dolphin watching. Yeah, <laughs> saw some dolphins, yeah. saw some sea lions. So there's a lot of great stuff to see out here. So anybody can come on out. Yeah. Show you guys, show you guys how it is. Awesome. Well, yeah. all summer long, you heard it. Hike by kayak is place yeah. to be. Yeah, reality TV at its best. After getting an understanding of ecotourism, I was wondering what issues would arise in a picture-perfect paradise ecotourist destination like San Diego. So I went to Jim Stone of Walk San Diego so I could find out what's up with walkability in San Diego. I mean, it seems so simple with walking, but it's actually a little harder than people would assume. Um, what are the issues that are involved in a walkable city? Well, actually, walking is easy. You know? <laughs> walking is difficult. It's only difficult if you're trying to do it crossing a street that's designed for cars and not people. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of the crux of the issue here, not just in San Diego, but uh, back in the 40s, everybody started moving out to the suburbs and they designed entire communities around cars. Okay. Everything was designed around the car. And now we're finding that's really not working so well because <laughs> 
the places where people work, where they play, and where they live are all separated. Oh, okay. And so to get from one place to the other, you need a car. And it's very hard, for example, for people in San Diego to live without having a car. Yes, yeah, sure. It's, so, so walking is natural, walking is easy, uh -huh. but again, the streets that we have designed for cars and not for people is what makes it difficult. Oh, okay. So then how is uh, Walk San Diego trying to achieve walkability in a big city like San Diego? Well, we work with government agencies. Uh, we're doing a lot of work with schools these days. There's a oh, program okay. called Safe Routes to School. Nice. And we go into a school system and we look at a two mile radius around each uh -huh. school and we, we find the best ways for kids to get to school. We look for problems where there are bad intersections, where there are crosswalks that aren't safe or where there might not be crosswalks or sidewalks. We make recommendations. These things get, get built by the city. So as this happens, we're transforming entire neighborhoods and making neighborhoods more walkable, not just for the kids, but for everybody who lives there. So it's a win-win for everyone. I was hearing uh, different statistics about how San Diego actually ranks with pedestrian fatalities. It's actually very high. Yeah, we, we don't do so well. In, in the first decade of this century, uh, there were 47,000 people killed, pedestrians killed nationwide. Okay. 7,000 of those fatalities happened here in California. And if you look at San Diego specifically, depending on how you count the statistics, we rank somewhere around 10th in terms of the, oh, wow. the number of, of people killed per 100,000 uh, incidents. So we're better than some places, but worse than others. And if you look nationally at the number of people as a percentage who die mm -hmm. in traffic accidents, nationwide about 12% of the fatalities are pedestrians. But here in San Diego County, it's more like 21%, so almost <laughs> twice the national average. Jeez. So we've got a lot of room for improvement. You know, we've got a great community. It's a wonderful place to walk, as opposed to some places where in the winter time you might not <laughs> want to be outside. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You want to be outside all the time in San Diego. Absolutely. So it makes sense for us to invest in in making this a more walkable community because everybody wins if we do. So um, our episode is uh, we've been going to a lot of different eco tourist attractions. Is eco tourism and walkability in a city uh, related? Well, well they, they are in the sense that the, the primary benefit, well, I shouldn't even say the primary benefit, but one of the benefits of having a more walkable community uh -huh. is we're getting people out of their cars. Yeah. Now, a typical family sedan like a Ford Taurus, okay. over its lifetime, will put 132,000 pounds of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. Wow. Carbon dioxide is a greenhouse gas. It causes uh -huh. global warming. Well, there's okay. also resources that are needed to make that car. There are resources that are used to create the fuel that create the 132,000 pounds of <laughs> yeah. carbon dioxide. All those things have an impact on habitats and environments. So okay. making places more walkable will help to conserve habitat and preserve habitat and to conserve natural resources. And that's what ecotourism is all about. People want to go out and they want to see wild places and wild animals. Yeah. And if we keep chewing up all the natural resources, there'll be fewer and fewer of those places. Absolutely. So and walkability I mean, helps that. Yeah, especially a place like San Diego, like you were saying, it's exactly what people want to see is the outside and be outdoors. I'm not really trying to stay inside my house you know, all the time. It's yeah, it's, well, it's good for the tourists to come to San Diego. Mm -hmm. It makes our city a more functional place and a more attractive place. But it's also really good for the people who live here. Well, walkability has a lot of benefits. Um, health, for example. Uh -huh. Walkable communities have lower rates of obesity. Uh, there are chronic diseases associated with that. So yeah. if, when you have lower rates of obesity, there are usually less heart disease, there's less conditions like diabetes. So there's okay. a great benefit right there. Yeah. People are just generally physically more fit, they feel better. Mm -hmm. Social benefits as well. People are outside. You know, when we create walkable places, we create places where people gather and they socialize and isolation is not good for people and this helps bring people together. So that's another benefit. And there are economic benefits. Oh. Walkable communities uh, have higher property values, anywhere okay. from seven to 14 percent higher. Oh wow! And w walkable places are better for business. Uh, if you drive by a place at 50 miles an hour, you don't even see what they're selling. But if you walk by, <laughs> you might catch your eye display in the window. Oh, okay. and there are actual studies that show the places where traffic has been slowed down and where people are walking, they actually are able to. Th those commercial districts sell more than other places. Oh, yeah, that's true. There's a lot of externalities you wouldn't think of, but, you know, if you're making Main Street a freeway, then <laughs> obviously work. people aren't going to yeah. have it work. Wow, okay, well, 
It's great to see Walk San Diego dedicated to enhancing a more livable San Diego. So I just wanted to thank you for the education, outreach, and advocacy that you guys are providing. Thank you so much for your time, Jim. Well, thank you, and San Diego is a great place, and we're just, I think, making it even greater. Definitely. Thanks a lot. By moving with a walkable SD, thanks to people like Jim Stone, we can get going anywhere. But why leave when we have such great eco-tourist attractions locally to see the sights on a sustainable San Diego? Thanks for watching the show, and enjoy the outdoors, Eco Diego. Holding this microphone makes me want to bust out in some kind of a lounge song. <laughs> no, you don't want me to do that. We'll have a man overboard drill right here on Pacific Highway or Harbor Drive. <laughs>